Entertainment and Sports Network. decided, you know what, this game cannot be played, postponed, no makeup date scheduled, but today's game is on, and there's a new starting pitcher for the Yankees as well. As today, the Yes Network presents New York Yankees baseball. It's the New York Yankees against the Minnesota Twins in the rubber game of what is now a three-game set here at Yankee Stadium in the Bronx. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Yankees baseball along with John Flaherty. I'm Michael Kay. Well, the starter yesterday was supposed to be Freddie Garcia, but the Yankees want to keep A.J. Burnett on turn, so Freddie Garcia is going to be skipped over, and A.J. Burnett will get the start. In fact, let's take a look at this pitching matchup today. The Twins also changed starters. Carl Provano was going to start last night. Now he's going to start the home opener for the Twins tomorrow. So Liriano goes today. A.J. Burnett goes for the Yankees. First start of the year, not too bad, John. Not too bad for A.J. He had an outstanding spring training, and he carried it into his first start, battling a little throat and sinus infection in this Ball game, but he had good stuff, a good fastball, the power curve down in the zone. He had six strikeouts in this game in five innings, gave up three runs, so a quality start for AJ and picked up win number one. The Yankees started so far, Sabathia's so done a good job. Burnett, we just detailed. Phil Hughes below what he expects of himself, and Ivan Nova, a very good first start as well. Now, all of the Yankee pitchers have been the beneficiaries of great offensive support, and Mark Teixeira is right in the middle of it. A great start for him, and we'll look it over and talk about it next on Segment 2 on Yes. That's John Flaherty. I'm Michael Kay. Yesterday was a rainout, a rainout that Mark Deshera didn't want. He wants to be in that lineup every day, play every day, because when you start like that, you don't want to rest. Well, Mark Deshera now has four home runs, three of them from the left side. Tuesday night, first opportunity to hit right-handed, and he took full advantage in the first inning, a three-run shot that gave the Yankees the lead. Mark Deshera, like you said, Michael, off to a great start, four home runs and 10 RBIs. Now, what a difference a year makes. Check this out. All of last April, he had 136. All of last April, he had 11 hits. He's already had six. All of last April, just two home runs. He already has four, and he has 10 ribbies at this point, and he had nine the entire month. Three three-run home runs this season. He has been on fire. Alex Rodriguez has been providing him protection in the lineup. And behind Alex, Jorge Posada has also gotten long ball a lot. Lineups, first pitch, baseball, next on Yes.
by BMW, the ultimate driving machine. Well, the lights are on here at Yankee Stadium. A little bit of a brisk, raw day on a Thursday afternoon as the Yankees and the Twins will finish up what is now a three-game series. Let's take a look at the Twins starting lineup that A.J. Burnett is going to face, put together by Ron Gardner. Bernard Spann in center field will lead off. Siyoshi Nishioka, the second baseman, will bat second. Joe Marrow will catch. He'll hit third. Cleaning up, playing first base, Justin Morneau. Jim Tomei, the D.H., will bat fifth. Betting sixth and playing right field, Michael Kadire. Jason Kubel in left field is going to hit seventh. The number eight hitter is the third baseman, Danny Valencia. And Alexi Casilla, the shortstop, will bat ninth. That lineup for the Minnesota Twins going to get to face A.J. Burnett, his second start of the season for the New York Yankees. That's how he did in the first one. Five innings, five hits, one walk, six strikeouts. Picked up a win in that ball game. Look at our scouting report. With those numbers, it was a good start. You pick up win number one, and he likes pitching against the Twins. He has only lost once in eight regular season starts against the Twins, and he's undefeated as a Yankee pitching in April, 6-0. and It's like the cooler weather, Michael. 6-0 and 11 April starts with a 3.99 ERA. It's got to be something, and uh, Joe Girardi was asked about it today, and he didn't have an answer either. Let's take a look at the Yankee defense behind A.J., brought to you by your Mercedes-Benz. Tri-State dealer. Andrew Jones at left, Brent Gardner in center, and Nick Swisher over and right. In the infield, it's Alex Rodriguez at third, the captain Derek Jeter at short, Robinson Cano plays second, Mark Deshera at first, Jeter Cano and Deshera all won gold gloves last year, Russell Martin behind the plate, and A.J. Burnett is on the mound. Crowd filing into the stadium. After this game, both teams will head to the airport. Yankees will go to Boston, where tomorrow the Red Sox will open their home season. And the Twins are going to go home, and they'll open their home season at Target Field. Well, Denard Spann will dig in. He's the leadoff batter for the Twins. The Twins have not done much in the first inning this year. In fact, let me amend that. They've done nothing. Uh, 0 for 15 in the uh, first five games, and uh, they've been outscored 9-0 in the first inning as well. So they're putting themselves behind the eight ball in every game they've played. A.J. Burnett feeling a lot better. The sinus infection that he had that really sapped him of any strength, mostly gone, so he's ready. And Joe Girardi thinks he's going to give him a lot more innings, hopefully seven today than he did last time out. Burnett's ready, Span's ready, and let's do it here in the Bronx. The first pitch oh. is a strike, and we're on the way. Good start for A.J. A lot was talked about in spring training. How he cleaned up his mechanics and not walk a batter down there in spring training. Walked one in his first outing, but six strikeouts, a good sign for him. The 0-1. Oh. Another strike. Let's look at the game time weather conditions presented by Bigelow T. Overcast, as you can see. 47 degrees, humidity 61%, not much wind, and the forecast is cold and cloudy. And the 0-2. Chop ball. Pretty good curveballs early on, back-to-back -back for A.J. And when it gets a little chilly in the beginning of the year, that's a pitch sometimes tough to get a grip. But early on, looks like A.J. has it figured out. Twins are trying to win their second straight game here in the Bronx. How rare is that? They have not won consecutive games here in one season since April 24th and 25th of 2000. So about 11 years. Brett throwing hard, 94 mile an hour fastball there. The ball jumping out of his hand. Russell Martin actually wanted that fastball up. Ended up inside, but you like the flight of the baseball, and that's always something with A.J. The last year we saw the ball running back to the middle of the plate. That four-seam fastball pretty true. 
The one two. And that one uh, could not be held by Russell Martin. Still one and two. Russell Martin back in the lineup today catching AJ Burnett. Pretty much on the same page that first outing of the year for AJ. Joe Girardi going back with that combination. Molina was supposed to catch last night. The rain out, he lost out on a start. One two to spin. Slapped into center field. Brett Gardner will put it away for the first out. IOTV offers incredible HD picture and sound. Get the best in HD free. IOTV is the official HD service provider of Yankees baseball on Yes. Siyoshi and Nishioka come to play so far in his career here in the big leagues. Five for 20. A star in Japan. Twins won the posting fee, and here he is. Switch hitter playing second base for them. A lot of scouts watching Nishioka say that he seems somewhat overwhelmed at this point, not letting his talents take over. Still in awe of where he is. Well, we saw him hitting right handed the other night against CC Sabathia. Back to the left side today, this afternoon. Five time All Star, three gold gloves, two time stolen base champion, a 346 average last year. Remember the 2006 World Baseball Classic Championship team? Right back to Burnett. Two outs. Here's Joe Mauer. We'll first take a look at this play. Come back right to AJ. So little time to react. Now our seven for 17. Lifetime against AJ. But so far just two for 14 this year. And a strike. I mentioned this the other night, Michael. You want to make sure you take advantage now when Joe Maurer has not found his stroke. Did have a base hit the other night to give the Twins the lead. Against Boone Logan. Oh. Now we're a 326 career hitter. I could flat out rake. And the 0 2. 1 and 2. Interesting stat 43.7% of Joe Maurer's hits go to the opposite field. That's the type of hitter he is. He goes line to line. You pitch him away, he's going to take it away. And, and also has power that way. Well, and he's a hitter. He's also not afraid to hit with two strikes. He will be very patient if he doesn't get a pitch he likes early. Behind in the count here, 1 and 2. A one two. Really good curveballs early on from AJ. Nice tight spin. Balls ending up down in the zone. That's a good sign for him and the Yankees. Two. Swing and foul tip held on to by Martin, and that'll do it. So the Twins' first inning and aptitude continues 0 for 18 so far this year. Twins nothing, and the Yankees come to that.
The captain, the shortstop, Derek Jeter, leads off against the lefty. Nick Swisher's in right field, batting second. Batting third, playing first base, Mark Teixeira. Alex Rodriguez, the third baseman, will clean up. Batting fifth, playing second base, Robinson Cano. Jorge Posada will DH. He's going to hit sixth. Batting seventh, playing left field, Andrew Jones. Russell Martin's going to catch. He's going to hit eighth. Batting ninth and playing center field, Brett Gardner. The lineup for the Yankees going to face left-hander Francisco Liriano. Be his second start of the year. The first one did not go very well. Five walks and four and a third innings. Three strikeouts in that game. Look at our scanning report. He was the comeback player of the year last year in the American League. And we just saw those numbers on the rough outing his first start of the year. And the reason why more balls than strikes. He threw 46 balls and only 44 strikes in that ball game. And that is not a recipe for success. So Derek Jeter is going to lead off. So far he is two for 18 this year. I saw that on the list, and I remember him getting three hits. I'm gonna check. Think out loud. Here. It is three for 18. My apologies to Derek. Two infield singles. Well, Derek was supposed to have the night off last night. See the numbers against Liriano. Pretty impressive. 385. Now the lefty pitching today instead of Carl Pavano, who gets skipped over. He'll pitch tomorrow for the Twins. Hot shot and pass to Valencia. And down the left field line. Gino will run first. He'll go to second. A leadoff double for the X. Well, nice way to start off the ball game for Derek Jeter. You get ahead in the count. You hunt a fastball inside. And he hits it right on the nose. On Yesmo. Good extension. Drilling it right past Valencia. Into the corner for a stand up double for Derek Jeter. So Jeter with his fourth hit. Here's Nick Swisher. Quest for 3,000 continues, so hit number 2,930. Wow, nice company, Rogers and And Jake Beckley. I don't know much about Jake, but Rogers won't be a Hall of Famer. Are you admitting you don't know something about Jake? Mm -hmm. I'm shocked. I admit I'm wrong all the time, Chuck. See if Nick can get a pitch out over the plate and drive one to right field. Try to move Derek Jeter over to third base. Ground foul. It's a nice combination for Liriano, a lefty who throws hard. 92, 93 miles an hour once he gets going. Good slider and a good changeup and tough to bat for a lefty or a righty because of that changeup and slider and the good velocity. Yankees have done a nice job in this series jumping out early. First two games, 4 0 leads after two innings, trying to get on the board early this afternoon. Oh. Nick Swisher might have got away with one there. Larry Van Over, the home plate umpire. Looked like a pretty decent pitch, did not give Liriano the call. Nick Swisher gets another chance. Beckley, by the way, also a Hall of Famer. Elected into Hall of Famer in 1971. And he's from Hannibal, Missouri. See that? I knew you had something for him. Played in the 1890s. I wanted to give you a little something. Also became a player manager. And his nickname was Eagle Eye John, so take that and uh, run with it. You don't have to give the attitude on top of it. Do you? I guess I did. The 3 2. 
fucked up. Nick angry with himself as he does not move Gina over. And Mornell makes the play. Let's check out the Twins defense brought to you by your Mercedes Benz Tri State Dealer. Google Span Kadir left to right. Valencia Casilla, Nishioka, Morno, third to first. Mauer behind the plate, and Liriano is on the mound. Here's Mark Teixeira, six for 18, opening the season with four home runs. And I asked him yesterday, John, what exactly did you do differently during the offseason? We keep hearing that you did something different. He said he hit a lot more. And he stopped lifting weights as much. He said because he used to lift a lot of weights during the offseason so that he could be stronger for the end of the year. And I said, well, then that leads to this question. Okay, you got off to a good start, but how do you know you're going to be strong enough at the end of the year? He goes, that's the million dollar question. Everybody said I should stop lifting the weights, and I gave in because I knew I wanted to get off to a better start, and I'm lifting now, but I'm hoping that I still have the stamina. At the end of the year, it was very forthright. Count one and two. Well, Derek Jeter is thinking about stealing third base there. Kind of got caught in no man's land. Well, to get back to Mark, Michael, I mean, you know, all these guys now with physical fitness and the programs that they're on, I mean, then once they get in season, it's more of a maintenance program with the weights, and I'm sure that's what Mark is talking about. Series on his right foot. Mariano throws hard. It looked like a slider that just kept breaking inside. It's above that right knee. Mm. You mentioned when he got hit the other night on the right foot. The last thing you want when you've gotten off to a great start, start battling some little nicks and bruises. Looks like Mark is going to be okay. First and second. Here's Alex Rodriguez, also six for 18. That's the 80th time in his career that Tashera has been hit. And that is going to leave a mark. Teixeira leads off first, Jeter off second, A Rod at the plate. Luriano Diaz. Count 1 0. Oh. Luriano, this is his fifth start against the Yankees, lifetime. 0 oh 2, 3.12 in those starts. Took the loss in a game on April 1st in Toronto. Twins lost 6 to 1 in that game. In the spring, 1 and 1, 4.82. There's a line. I said April 1st, it was April 2nd. There's a line that he had against the Blue Jays. Five walks, you just can't do that. The twins had a tough time in Toronto and Carl Pavano who's known as a guy who throws a lot of strikes. He walked a few in that ball game. We just saw the line for Liriano. Very unusual for the Minnesota Twins pitching staff to be that erratic out of the zone. That's always been their mantra. Just pound the strike yep. zone. And Joe Mauer wants to talk with Liriano. And on the same page we mentioned earlier that the Yankees have really jumped out in the first inning. Down on the board against the Twins, they've been playing catch-up baseball the first two games of the series. Rick Anderson, the pitching coach. One-one. 
one and two. Good change up right there to Alex Rodriguez. A couple of sliders down and in, followed up by a change up down and away. This is as good as it gets. Alex on his front foot a little bit. You got to respect the velocity of the fastball. Swing and a miss. Rodriguez down on strikes. This was last year for Francisco Liriano. Fastball 49% of the time. Slider changeup. Slider a good pitch, only 177, the batting average against. 32% of his pitches were sliders, but 72% of his strikeouts came on sliders. So that is a swing and miss pitch. Here's Robinson Cano. Now Liriano's tough on lefties. He has not allowed a home run to a left-handed hitter in his last 60 regular season starts. Now he did give up one to a Matsui in game one in 2009 of the ALDS. But regular season 60 games. The 0 1. High fly bar. Left center. Span puts it away. So Liriano works into and out of trouble as the Yankees will strand two. We've played one. There's no score in the blocks. Today's question is which American League East team was surprised that surprised you most with its winless start. You could text us at 58772. The choices are is it Boston or is it Tampa Bay. You can text your vote to 58772 standard text messaging rate supply. I think Boston's shocks everybody. Yeah, everybody's picking them to win 100 games and they're 0 and 5. Everybody's picking them. I know you're not. Vegas you. is. Vegas is. Right. So everybody in the state of Vegas, not the state of Nevada. Very contentious for an afternoon. It's a game. day game after a rainout. You get plenty of rest. It's debatable. We go to the second inning. Here's Justin Morneau. Well, Michael, we're lucky enough to work that game tomorrow afternoon at Fenway Park. Imagine if they come back there without a win, oh. how their fans will react. We'll keep an eye on that game. Top of the fifth inning, the Red Sox and the Indians are scoreless. Can you imagine if they come back 0 and 6? Oh! I mean, 1 and 5 wouldn't be great, but without picking up a win on the road to start the year. Larry Van Over, and usually not a good thing when you talk about an umpire this early in the game. You see the numbers against AJ, 278 with a home run. Curveball looked like a pretty good pitch. AJ didn't get the call. Oh.
Is that Larry Vanover's voice we're hearing say ball? The ball mic is very, very uh, sensitive today. 3 0. Doesn't say anything that time as Warner works a walk. So you know Vanover is behind the plate. Tony Randazzo's at first. Dan Bellino is at second. And Brian Gorman over at third. There's Jim Tomei. Tomei's looking to fill a column. This is the only ballpark that he's ever played in that he's not hit a home run in. Obviously hit it across the street at the old Yankee Stadium, but this one he is yet to connect. He's at 589 home runs. Oh. Six balls in a row for AJ. Now caught up with Jim before the game today, Michael. You know, doing a little research for you, trying to give you something for the telecast. Thanks. With all those home runs, what did you say? 580. 589. 589. He actually told me that it's it's still a grind for him offensively when he walks to the plate. And by that I mean it's. It's not easy. He makes it look easy, but he said throughout his whole career, it's just been one of those things when he walks up there, he just doesn't feel 100% locked in. And he, he was very humble, and he said, and I've had some success, John. A little bit, 589 home runs. He's had enough success to go to the Hall of Fame one day. Oh, just an awful play by Sweeney Murdy. Dropped the ball, now he's milking it. It's sad. Now he's looking to get the ball away to try to be a hero. Nice job, Sweeney. Oh, well, he, 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 he's playing king. Everybody has their five minutes. And he's milking his. I gave it to a kid. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Ah, there we go. Good job. Oh. Count three and two. Oh, good buddy, Sweeney. Jay Burnett starts up the second inning by walking the first two batters. Larry Rothschild looking on is not going to be too pleased with that, but AJ really not missing by much. That 3 2 pitch missed by a lot. 2 2 was pretty close. A lot was made of that front leg for AJ in spring training, a better direction towards home plate. Mentioned earlier, I could always tell with AJ with that flight of the fastball, if it was straight and true from that center field angle, it's usually a good sign. It ran back to the middle and ran in off the plate, usually coming around it on the side of it a little bit too much. Missing with the fastball again might be a good time to drop a curveball. Try to change things up mechanically for AJ if you're Russell Martin. Slow him down a little bit, call a breaking ball. And get, him, get him back on track. Another fastball. And you know that's a pitch I'm talking about right there. He's not missing by a lot. Just off the plate, down and away. Larry Vanover early on looks like he's going to be a hitter's umpire. AJ in a very dangerous count here to a good fastball hitter. Gets away with it.
the 2 1. High fly ball, right field. Swisher makes the catch. Tagging is more now, but he'll stay right there. Just draws the card. Good job by AJ there. It's his power against power. Went with a fastball up in the zone. Kadire hits a nice fly ball to right field. Here's Jason Kubel, six for 17 so far in the early going. Twins are two and three. The Yankees are three and two. Kubel with that 353 batting average, really the one twin hitter who's swinging the bat pretty well early on. Against AJ. One up. Popped up. Martin. Leads in. I can't make the play, but a nice effort by Russell Martin. And he gets a round of applause from the fans of the stadium. Russell Martin has gotten off to a nice start as a Yankee. He's been swinging the bat, stealing some bases, doing a nice job with the pitching staff. The IOTV super shot. You're going to see Russell Martin on the railing of the dugout. It's a little help from the coaching staff there with the Twins, but the Yankee fans are going to love the way this guy goes about his business, plays the game hard. Did it ever bother you that no one really helps catchers? Except if it's your own team. Well, if it's your own team, you know you're going to get a little help, but no. I mean, you just try to make a play and worry about it later. And you can see with the railing, Russell tries to find and make a diving catch. Actually, looked like he held himself up on the railing. Valencia, two for 16 in the early going. Down one and oh. So, AJ. A little bit of a workout here in the second inning. His pitch total is at 34. Okay, nice inning for AJ. If you can walk the first two batters, a sign of trouble, and then rebound and get through the inning. You can see the 94 miles an hour on the radar gun there, but the fastball looks like it has a little bit of life on it. A lot of these Twins hitters. A little bit behind on some fastballs and fastball counts. Missing by much. You can't say he's wild. He's just not on the same wavelength as Larry Vano. And you know, this is a ball. It's off the plate. A good catch by Russell Martin trying to give Van over a look. 
But like you said, Michael, I mean, he's just just missing off the plate, not getting a couple of close calls, and you really have to be patient if you're AJ and know that if you keep hitting some of those spots, eventually you're going to get some of the calls. Popped up. That's some nice pitching by A.J. Burnett. Walked the first two batters and did not allow a run. So the Twins strand two. We go to the bottom of the second. No score. A.J. Burnett walks the first two batters in the top of the second, does not allow a run. So we're still scoreless, and for the Yankees in this inning, it'll be Posada, Jones, and Martin, 6, 7, and 8 in the Yankee order against Francisco Liriano. Posada, 4 for 18, but 3 of the 4 home runs. The way Liriano gets the sign like that looks just like the Mets Yoma and Santana, former twin. Jorge only six at bats against Liriano, but has three hits. Rosado was going to get a day off yesterday. The whole team did. But the back in the lineup was at the H yesterday. It was going to be. A Rod is the DH and Chavez playing third. Good changeup again. We've seen a couple from Liriano in this ballgame early on. I'm kind of surprised, Michael, at the splits that we showed before fastball, slider, changeup percentage. Liriano has a good fastball. You would think he would throw it a little bit more. He likes the slider, he likes his changeup. He's got a good fastball. Outside. Strike three. Just got the outside corner. Posada does not like the call. Well, this weekend the Yankees head to Boston for their first battle of the 2011 season with their arch rivals. Yes, has complete coverage tomorrow afternoon starting at 1 with Audi batting practice today. And then Saturday and Sunday come back to Yes after both games for insight and analysis with Yankees extra innings presented by Tri-State Ford again only on Yes. Mauer setting up inside. It looked like a backdoor slider. 
crosses the plate. Larry Van Over gives him the call. Andrew Jones, one for three, that won a home run. In his first Yankee plate appearance. That one's driven deep to right center field. Giving Chase a span. On the run, he makes the play. Andrew Jones did that for a long time playing center field for the Braves. So he knows the feeling on the other end. Yeah, Denard Span covering a lot of ground in center field, going to right center, making the play right in front of the wall. I thought Andrew Jones had another home run here. The ball was not carrying earlier during batting practice. Kind of died when it got to the warning track. Still a nice play by Span. Is Russell Martin oh. and a strike? Martin six for seventeen. A couple of stolen bases. Done a very good job behind the plate. Good stuff. Count one and two. Another good changeup. He's thrown that pitch on a lot of the one-one counts early on in this ball game. Pay attention to see if that's maybe a pattern he's going to continue with. Are the Yankee hitters on the bench paying attention. And Martin down on strikes. An impressive second inning for Francisco Liriano. He has three strikeouts through two. We have no score here in the Bronx. when they host Carmelo Anthony in the Knicks in Newark. Complete coverage starts tomorrow at 6.30 with the Nets pregame. Then Chris Carino and Jim Spinarco will have the call. The Knicks in the Nets. It all starts tomorrow at 6.30. Only on yes. In the back row there, the taller guy is Chris Humphreys. Below him in the ski cap is Sasha Vujicic. And there's uh, Chris Carino in the back row as well. To the right of your screen, he'll be doing the play-by-play -play for yes. Members of the Nets are here. With Jim Spinarco doing that game this right. right? Lincoln scoreboard, no score, top of the third. You got to meet Jim Spinarco the other night, and you uh, you really liked him. I you don't did. like many people. I don't like many people, and Jim Spinarco, one of the people that we just hit it off, got along very well, and thought he got robbed of an Emmy for his work with the Nets. 
set up a little golf this season as well, Michael, if you want to join us. Um, I'll meet you after. Okay. AJ behind in the count again, 2 and 0 oh here to Casilla, trying to have a nice inning, keep that pitch count down. Straight, you just meet the guy and you guys make a date for golf? Just like that? Well, you know, this is one of those situations that Frank DeGrace, who produces the net games and does some of our Yankee games. Right. That one's popped up. A Rod in foul territory makes a play. It's played by Alex Rodriguez. Well, Frank started talking with Jim and I about golf, and then the next thing you know, he belongs to a club in Jersey. I belong to Rockland Country Club in Rockland, New York. So as you say, let's do it. That's great. I'm happy for you two guys. Drive and a base hit down the left field line off the bat of Denard Span. Jones plays it in the corner and Span has himself a double. Span has hit the ball hard two times. A line drive to Brett Gardner to lead off the game for the Twins. We talked earlier in the series. He's trying to be a little bit more aggressive this season and he gets a first pitch fastball and jumps all over it going the other way. His speed an easy double. No play for Andrew Jones. Scouts bearing down on Nishioka and his stance. You see his hands out away from his body a little bit, a little open with his lower half. Hot shot up the middle, caught by Gene. Nishioka hits kind of a looping line drive. Take a look at his stance. You see the hands kind of out away from him a little bit, a lot of weight on the back side. Never see a hitter with his hands out away from him. a lot of times the scouts will say try to pound him in with a fastball and that's what the Yankees and AJ try to do. It works out as he didn't hit the ball all that hard. So runner in second now two outs. And here's Joe Maurer. That one trickles. Behind Russell Martin allowing Span to go to third. Well, AJ got Joe Maurer to swing at a curveball his first at bat for strike three, and that just goes underneath the glove of Russell Martin. The right intentions tries to get down and block it, pulls the glove up just a little bit, and that cost him. Hitters like Joe Maurer, when you strike out on a curveball your first at bat, it's going to be even tougher to get him to do the same thing as second at bat. You really have to change up your patterns. Change up. I think only the second one we have seen this afternoon, and both of them have been really good from AJ. That's a nice call by Russell Martin right there. Change up the patterns. Joe Maurer has seen a couple of curveballs at first at bat, the first pitch here. He's got to look at a change up.
just missed. And Russell Martin's getting frustrated. You can tell by his body language there after that pitch. Maybe he can have a little conversation. Not getting the close calls early. I mean, it's a close call, John, but yeah. it does look like he's outside. And you can see a little frustrated. It's a borderline pitch. But like I mentioned earlier, you really got to keep your pitcher patient. If you keep hitting that spot, eventually you're hoping that you're going to start getting some calls. It's that one. A lot of respect for Joe Maurer right there in a 3 1 count. AJ throws a good changeup for strike two to get back into the count. The double by Span is wasted. No runs a hit. One man left. We go to the bottom of the third inning. There's no score here on yes. Journey, the journey goes to Boston. Yankees leave after the game. They open up the Fenway portion of the Red Sox season at 2.05 tomorrow. Our coverage starts at 1 on yes. And then the game's on Saturday and Sunday. Saturday's on Fox. Sunday's on ESPN. But following those games, it's Yankees extra innings right here on yes. Boom. Game's over. Turn right to yes. We'll have complete coverage. Then after the Boston series, Yankees come home. Three against the Orioles and three against the Texas Rangers. The Lincoln scoreboard, there is no score. Although 0 0 is a score. And that's where we are right now. Brett Gardner will lead off against Liriano. So against the tough lefty, they give Granderson the day off, and uh, Gardner is in there. Kind of getting off to a slow start, two for 16, facing a tough lefty in Liriano, and behind in the count, 0 and 2. Always seems to happen that way when you're going through a little tough stretch behind in the count. Slow roller and foul. Please blanket. You can use one of those today, Johnny. Yeah, I wasn't prepared today. I 
the sun was supposed to come out today, wasn't That's it? That's what forecast? our producer told us. Bill Bolin guaranteed it. I'm still waiting. He's got some time to go, though. He's usually always on the money. Job by Brett Gardner laying off some tough sliders down and away, bringing the count all the way back to full three and two. And Gardner works a lot. Nice at bat for Brett Gardner fighting all the way back. Little leadoff walk. Jeter ripped the double inside third of the first and his fourth hit of the year. 2,930 hits for Derek. Talk about Derek Morris, the 3,000 with 2,908 hits as a shortstop. That's the most hits in Major League history for a shortstop. So he's already done something historical hit wise. Because of the rain out, this turns into the rubber game. The Yankees won the first game, the Twins won the second, coming back from down 4 0. And count three. Mariano throwing a little slider on a 2 0 count to Derek Jeter, missing. Now he's behind 3 0 with Nick Swisher looking on. Likes his off speed pitches. Last year for Derek against lefties worked out pretty well. 321. Runner goes. The throw gets by Castillo and Nishioka backing up, so a stolen base for Bart. Unusual to see a base stealer go on 3 0. Brett gets a good jump, goes on first move, peeks in and sees the throw is offline. Nice play by Nishioka backing up. Surprised Joe Maurer a little bit. Doesn't get a good grip on the transfer and on Yesmo. You can see Brett Gardner head first slide in there easily. Over the mound, grabbed there by Casilla. The out is made, and that will move Gardner over the third. Of course, Derek Jeter wants to get a base hit, but a very productive at bat. And three and one in a ground ball up the middle to the right side. You advance Brett Gardner. Now Nick Swisher, your job is situational hitter. The ball up in the air. As it looks like the infield for the Twins is going to be playing in. Inside. 
times around the batting cage Kevin Long the hitting instructor will call out certain situations man on third less than two outs. As a hitter you look for the ball out over the plate. Middle of the field try to get it up in the air. You see how Liriano and Joe Maurer are trying to combat that. Nick last last year 12 out of 30 with runners on third. Less than two out, 40 percent. Five pitches, 24 strikes. The 2 0. -oh. Join out to right field. That's going to get a run in. Kadaya makes the play. Gardner tags and jog home, and the Yankees lead 1 0. That's ABC baseball. Walk, stolen base, move the runner, sack fly, and you lead 1 0. Well, nice job by Nick Swisher, but an excellent job by Derek Jeter getting him to third base. Nick getting a fastball out over, patient enough early in the at bat. Once he got his pitch to hit, he did not miss it. See, he's excited about it. Sometimes players will give you the answers that you think is the right answer to give a politically correct answer. And I asked Mark yesterday, with four home runs, is there a danger that you get into a home run mode? He goes, absolutely. You have to fight it all the time. He said, because then you want that home run every time up. He said, then you stop hitting home runs. Swing and a miss, and that will do it. But the Yankees build a run, and they take a lead. One run on no hits and nobody left. We've played three, one nothing Yanks. Look at our Home Depot hitter scouting report on Justin Morneau. A lot was made last year about the concussion, but he has a history of concussions from his young hockey playing days. So they're really going to have to think big picture in Minnesota, give him some couple of days off and pay attention to those concussion symptoms. And an everyday slugger who hits well against lefties or righties last year, 325 against left handers with seven home runs. And that was in limited game because of the concussions. Well, he leads off the fourth inning. And last year he loved leading off 29 for 74 that's 392 and six of the 29 were home runs. He walked in the second inning. A.J. Burnett has himself a one nothing lead.
count one and one. Justin Morneau won an MVP. One of just three Canadians to win the MVP. The other two being Larry Walker in 97 and Joey Votto of the Reds last year. High pop up to Shara. Gives it a look, but it's good. Looked like another changeup from A.J. Burnett. A lot of talk in spring training. Maybe he would throw that pitch a little bit more this year. And we've seen a couple today, and this is really the worst one that he has thrown up in the zone. Gets away with a mistake. Field, it's a base hit. Swisher plays it quickly. Morneau's going for two. Here's the throw. And it gets past Jeter, backing up his AJ. So a leadoff double for Morneau. Time for the New York State Smokers quit line quiz. Mark Deshera, one of four players, hit 25 or more home runs in all eight seasons to begin their careers. Who are the other three? Aggressive base running right there from Justin Morneau. Thought maybe he was going to hold up. He forced the issue with Nick Swisher and got away with it. Tommy has oh. 589 home runs as we mentioned. Here's how Morneau got to second. They can double all the way. It's an aggressive play leading off an inning. And Nick didn't have a whole lot on that throw. Morneau gets in there safely. Tomei 589 as we mentioned his first one that he ever hit was across the street at the old Yankee Stadium in 91 and it came off the beast Steve Farr. Steve Farr. Well, I played against Jim Tomei when he was in double A for Canton Akron which was a double A team of the Indians. And Michael he was a, a I wouldn't call him a slap hitter. But he was a high average guy, did not hit a lot of home runs, and just drove the ball the other way. And then he gets up to Triple A the next year in the International League, learned how to pull the ball. The offseason before that was the MVP of Triple A, and the rest is history, as they say. When he was in Double A, was he this big? Was he a big guy like this? He had the size. He didn't have as he hasn't hadn't filled out, obviously. But he was hitting like 350, 360 with maybe four home runs. High drive, center field, going back. Gardner still back on the track, and he plays it off the wall. It gets by him. Morneau will round third. He'll score. And Tomek stops at second with an RBI double as we are tied at one. And Brett Gardner having a conversation with Andrew Jones and Nick Swisher. This is not a slap hitter now, and Jim Tomey going to go to the Hall of Fame. 589 home runs. He thinks he has a shot here. Kind of cruising into first base as Brett Gardner turns off the wall. Nobody there to back it up. Run will score, and Tomey in the second base with a double. You know what? It really is an epidemic, though, John. This is this is a pro's pro. Never has had any question about his hustle, and he was just jogging the first base. He might have been able to get a triple despite. Being older and not that fast, but he's watching it, thinking it was gone. Yeah, he should have been a third. He would take a look again out of the box. Admiring it. He knows he hit it on the barrel of the bat. Morneau does a good job of base running as Jim Tomey kicks it into another gear. He's thinking about three and decides to stay at second. He wouldn't even have to think about it, John, if he ran hard to first. The 0-1. Good fastballs by A.J. Kadire has been late. First at bat hit a fly ball to right field. He's behind on a few fastballs here. 0 and 2.
This Carpet of Telecast is presented by Authority of the New York Yankees. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. The accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the New York Yankees. Makes the catch. Tony Tides will go to third. And there's one out. Would have been a sacrifice fly if Tome was on third base, obviously. A nice piece of hitting by Kadair. Like he turned up the dial a little bit, was able to get out in front of the fastball a little bit better. He's behind on every fastball AJ has thrown him. And a nice job catching up to that one. Yankees bring their infield in. Not all the way to the grass because Tommy doesn't have great speed. Jason Kubel at the plate. The good change up at 87 miles an hour. AJ here with one out. You can see the infield kind of halfway. Thinking about the possibility AJ is of a strikeout here. Maybe a weak ground ball if you can run a fastball in on his hands. Up from AJ Burnett, Kubel out in front under the glove of Mark Teixeira. Very unusual. You don't see that every day. Gold glove first baseman. Kubel picks up a double and an RBI. Larry Rothschild settling down AJ Burnett. Trip like that is more of a let me give him a breather, or did he notice something? It's probably a little bit of both. You know, if I was Larry Rothschild, though, I'd try to keep AJ positive. And I feel like he's throwing the ball well in this game, not missing by a lot with his fastball. Throwing some really good change ups. You got a long way to go here, one out in the fourth inning. And I think most importantly, just slow the game down because we saw last year things can get out of hand in a hurry with AJ. Fastball today, just not perfect command. As we mentioned earlier, he's not really off, but he's he is missing, but just off the plate. And it's better to miss off the plate than over the plate. Yeah, it's a lot better than what we saw last year where that fastball would start away off the plate and run back middle. It's pretty true through the spot. He's just missing by a little bit. High fly ball. Left field. Andrew Jones will make the play, and that will do it. But the Twins take the lead. I'll check that. That's the second inning. That's the second out. I'm so sorry. The second out as uh, Kubel stays in second. 
day. The ball doesn't look like it's going to go anywhere. Valencia, I thought, pretty pretty good swing on that. Andrew Jones had to come in on that fly ball. So you can't believe it. Jim Tomey, I saw when he went into the dugout, said he crushed that ball to center field and didn't get out. 70 pitches for A.J. Burnett. Here's Alexi Casilla. Right in on the fist. Count on one. Lead up double by Morneau, followed up by a double by Tomei to score Morneau, tied the game. Kadire, deep fly ball to right, moving Tomei over to third. Kubel then doubles past a diving to Sheriff to give the Twins a 2 1 lead. And then Valencia with a fly ball to left. And that's where we are right now with two outs, top of the fourth inning. If you're AJ, go get Casilla right here, the number nine hitter in the lineup. Got off to a slow start. The Nark span on deck has hit two balls hard off of AJ. One of the twins actually swing back pretty well at the beginning of the year. Second. And that will do it as the Twins take the lead. Two runs on three hits and one man left. We go to the bottom of the fourth. Twins two. Yankees one. Once again, the question, which American League East team has surprised you most with its winless start? You've been texting us at 58-772, and here is how you voted. Many people shocked. 76% of the Red Sox. And the Red Sox now nothing, nothing in the bottom of the eighth inning against the Indians. And hovering at a mark of 0-6. Pitch inside to Alex Rodriguez. Nothing, nothing. Struggling offensively. has been so locked in has had some waves over his first two at bats. Yeah I was just thinking the same thing Michael. I mean during spring training we've never really seen any of these swings and at the beginning of the year.
check swing. And Randazzo said he did not go, so the count three and two. Even from the take there of Alex Rodriguez, didn't look like he's picking the ball up out of Liriano's hand all that well. And off balance, even on the take. And he works a walk, so a leadoff walk issued to Alex. Let's check out the uh, New York State Smokers Pit Line quiz. Mark Deshera, one of four players at 25 or more home runs in all eight seasons to begin their careers. Who are the other three? I think Albert Pujols is one. He is. Eddie Matthews and Strawman, Darryl Strawberry. Here's Robinson Cano. Grounded right side through for a base hit. A Rod stops at second. So the Yankees have the first two runners on. Thing of beauty for Robinson Cano did not hit that ball all that well. Rolled over on it. Picks up a base hit anyway. Now Jorge Posada in a position to do a little damage here. Nobody out first and second. So here's Posada struck out looking in the second inning. Strike on the inside corner. Came right at Posada. You can see the reaction too of Jorge. I mean, he throws it inside. I'm not used to seeing a lefty throw that hard and be able to locate inside like that. I'm surprised Liriano doesn't use that fastball more than he does. Quickly. 0-2. Posada a little bit late. A 92 mile an hour fastball. Now, if you're Joe Maurer, what are you thinking? Do you go with the off speed pitch? Where Posada might be sitting on it. Shoji is a little late on the fastball. You go back with the fastball and elevate it, see if you get him to chase or throw an off speed pitch in the dirt. Count one and two. And the pitch comes too far inside the count two and two. And Andrew Jones on deck. Takes his time and punches out Jorge for the first out. And Jorge Posada knew it. He did not have any words for Larry Van Over. It was a fastball inside, and then Liriano came back with a backdoor slider. Pretty tough combination. We see Jorge leaking a little bit, looking for the ball inside. He doesn't get it. Backdoor slider for strike three. Liriano, all star in 06, missed the entire 07 season. TJ surgery, struggled the next two seasons. Last year, bounced back. Rounded slowly toward third, but it kicks foul. There are a lot of rumors during the offseason and then even as spring training began that the Twins might be uh, amenable to trading Liriano, which didn't make sense. He's either their number one or two starter, whichever way you look at it, and they expect to contend and 
they're not a team that any longer has to worry about payroll of an over $100 million payroll with their, their new ballpark. So why would he be on the market? But here he is. He's still a twin. The 0-1. Oh, and 2 It's getting nasty now. A couple of runners on. Strike out of Jorge Posada and quickly ahead of Andrew Jones 0-2. And, and he has just taken a one nothing lead on a suicide squeeze in the bottom of the eighth inning. Was outstanding. Now they gave up a, a good player in AJ Prusinski, but AJ did not play well with the Giants. The Twins got back Liriano, big time starter, Joe Nathan, their closer, and Booth Bonser, who also was a contributor. That's a really good trade. Outside trade. Now, a lot of GMs don't like to make lopsided trades because you'll never get that team to trade with you again. You, you want both teams to do okay. You'd rather do better, but you don't want to destroy the team. And that's a lopsided trade. Mauer and Liriano want to get on the same page. Follow the New York Yankees with the MLB.com at Bat 11 app for your iPhone, iPad, Android, or Blackberry. Get live audio, pitch by pitch tracking, video highlights, and more. Text at Bat to 31826 or visit Yankees.com for details. The O2. One and two to Andrew Jones. High drive. That's a base hit down the left field line. Alex Rodriguez scores to tie the game. Cano will go to third. He'll stop right there. Andrew Jones with a game tying RBI double. These are the games Andrew Jones is going to get a majority of his at bats against some left handed pitching. Facing a tough lefty today, gets a slider middle of the plate. He's able to pull it into the corner in left field. Alex Rodriguez scoring easily. Robinson Cano, he's thinking about scoring all the way from first, coming around second. He's going to pick up third base coach Robbie Thompson, who holds him. Andrew Jones cruises into second base. Nice little RBI double. Andrew Jones is second ribby, one a home run, and that one the game tying double. And here is Russell Martin. They're in at the corners. A ground ball to short or second will give the Yankees a 3 2 lead. Second inning. Great off speed pitch count one and one. Russell Martin had one thing on his mind right there, looking for a fastball in. He did not get it. And after this change up away, had Martin fooled. As a hitter, you took your shot at it, you didn't get it. Now you get back to the basics, look for a ball out over. And as you said, the infield, the middle infield is playing back. Ground ball up the middle or fly ball to get the job done. Well, if there was any concern by a shaky spring and that bad first start by Liriano, you could move those concerns away. He's still got very good stuff. A lot of life on the fastball and a lot of the reactions from the hitters on the slider. You could tell it's got late break. Ron Garden and I are watching. Change up, swung on a miss. Count two and two. A lot of weapons for Joe Maurer behind the plate. 
slider down and in. He follows it up with a good change up down and away, and that's the reaction you're going to get from the hitter after you see a slider at your back foot. Change up is going to have you out in front of full. Interesting pitch right here. First base open. The lefty Gardner on deck waiting. So Liriano throws some sliders in and follow it up with a change up away. What's he going to do on a 3 2 pitch? Soft ground ball to first. Here comes Cano. He'll score. The out has made it first. Moving to third is Andrew Jones. And the Yankees retake the lead. They are up 3 to 2. Russell Martin's going to get an RBI in the ground ball, but Robinson Cano deserves a lot of credit. Got a great read off the bat here on the ground ball the other way and a great jump. no thinking about the play at home, takes the out at first base. But good aggressive running by Robinson Cano and a good read off the bat. So he takes a secondary lead down the line, doesn't hesitate, gets a good read, scores easy. Here's the Coors Light freeze cam. That ball was right off the end of the bat and squibbed it toward Morneau. And a good read, as John said, by Cano, and he scored easily. Now runner at third with two outs for Gardner. And the count is 1-0. and oh. And he did throw that 3-2 changeup again, Michael. That's why Martin was out in front off the end of the bat. Good job just to put it in play. Twenty five pitches this inning for Liriano, seventy four overall. Count two and one. Yankees up three to two. Russell Martin with an RBI on the ground out. Start the season, you will take them any way they come. This might be the at bat that gets him going. Fastball in, breaks his bat, it sounded like. Strong enough to loop it into right field. Base hit, more importantly, an RBI. Two outs, Andrew Jones taken off on the crack of the bat. Answer back inning right here for the Yankees. After AJ Burnett gave up two runs in the top of the fourth, they come right back with three in the bottom. Down one and zero to Jeter. Good buddy out lighter who's going to join us tomorrow in the booth in Boston. He always says that you train pitchers like fighters to go 15 to 20 pitches an inning and once you get above that you really start to feel it. So you know that Liriano starting to feel it right now.
This will be the 30th pitch of the inning for Liriano. Slide step there. It's Jeff Manchip is going to get ready in the twin bullpen. One goes. But Jeter walks. So that will move Gardner to second without the stolen base. And now Rick Anderson's going to come out and talk things over with Liriano. Now the ball fell apart in this inning. He looked so good, but an opening back to A Rod, a single by Cano, really a, a dribble yeah. through the right side. He struck out Posada looking at a nasty pitch, but then Andrew Jones really uh, jump started the inning with that double to left to drive in a run. Then the ground ball by Martin, a bloop single by Gardner to right field, and a walk to Jeter. So he hasn't really been slapped around except for the Andrew Jones base hit, uh, but he's in a lot of trouble. Yeah, Andrew Jones really the one batter that centered a uh, cutter slider from Liriano was able to drill it into left field, but you're right, a couple of walks, a couple of rolling base hits. Long inning. Here's Nick Swisher. He is 0 for 1, had a sack fly his last time up. Four rookies so far on the season. Eighth batter to come to the plate. Ground ball is short, and that will do it. But the Yankees have done their damage. They scored three runs. How'd they do it? This big base hit by Andrew Jones. That was huge in the inning. Then a slow roller by Russell Martin. And then it was time for Brett Gardner, a little blooper in the right. It all adds up the Yankees four, twins two.
That Red Sox game, they brought in Darnell McDonald, John, to pinch, to pinch run, run for David Ortiz, and then he, he goes too far around second and, and gets caught. And then the Indians scored their run. Guy on first, still on base against Bard, sack blunt, goes to third, suicide squeeze, and that's the, that's the run in the game. They're 0-6. Can you imagine what Fenway's going to be like? You got to tune in tomorrow, everybody. I mean, it's a must-tune. And we'll be on the air at one. The game time will be at two. Because it's not like people in Boston to overreact to this. Not at all. Not at all. No. They usually take it very, very easy and calm. And... I think that reminds me of McDonald going in there to pinch run. You remember Charles Gibson? Yes. Came in to pinch run at Wrigley Field and got picked off oh. first base to end the game. Yes, I do remember. That was a uh, low point. Round ball to first. To share, one away. Michael, I sound like a broken record, but another changeup for A.J. Burnett. And he's got to have thrown probably nine or ten changeups, and I can only remember one that has not been good. It's definitely a better mix with his pitches fastball, curveball, changeup. For a little shutdown inning here in the top of the fifth after the Yankees gave him three runs in the bottom of the fourth, give him a lead. Good velocity on his fastball. And there's never, ever been any doubt about A.J. Burnett's stuff. Sometimes he falls a little out of sync. But his stuff has always been electric. And if you look at his career record, you always talk about, well, A.J. could be so much more. 111 wins, 100 losses, and even 4-0 ERA in the American League. Pitching all the time in the American League, he sees 62 and 50. With a 4.24. Last year was a terrible year for AJ statistically. 10 and 15 with an over 5 ERA. As he gets Nishioka looking. But John, if he turns that around, he's just a pitcher the Yankees want. The Yankees will take 15 and 10. Take it any day of the week. And, you know, I, I hate to even say this because you don't want to jinx AJ, but he's been healthy the last few years. He went through a lot of arm problems early in his career. Now it seems like he's got that all figured out. Good start to this fifth inning. Weak ground ball and a nice strikeout. Two quick outs. You know, he attributes a lot of staying healthy to Roy Halliday. Being in Toronto and seeing how Halliday did his work and did all of his exercises and got there early and, and threw when he was supposed to throw. And AJ followed that lead. And, and you're right, he has stayed healthy because of that. And Halliday will pitch today against the Mets. Mauer struck out twice against AJ. Count one and zero, oh, and the righty does. Sky the other way, but slices into the seats. Probably not going to see Joe Mauer strike out too many times during the regular season. That's his first strikeout in the first inning, and then a perfectly located fastball in the third. 0 for two with two strikeouts. You don't see that very often from Joe Mauer. And that strikeout in the third was with a runner at third base with two outs. That's why AJ was so pumped up. The 1 1. 2 and 1. Some of those close pitches to A.J. Burnett. Did not get them the first couple of innings.
the 2 2. The 2-2. Two, two. Still 2-2. Two and, two. Eighty-five pitches for Burnett. Girardi had said before the game he'd like to get seven innings out. The 2 2. Off of Burnett's glove, charging his cheater. Fields fires, not in time. That is a base hit for Maurer. A well earned base hit. A nice try by A.J. Burnett and a nice try by Derek Jeter. Ground ball deflected by A.J., took some of the steam off of it. Derek tries to come in and get the strong throw, but Maurer just beats it. Looks like Derek reached twice there, John. That might have been the yeah. play. Yankees lead four to two. Top of the fifth inning, and here's Morneau. He walked and doubled. Oh. One and zero. Got to be careful here with Morneau. Obviously a lot of power has already had a double on the afternoon. Had a long battle with Joe Maurer. Close play, you don't get the call. You get back to work, keep your concentration with more no. Oh! Count one and one. Morneau so dangerous. Started that two-run rally in the fourth inning. The double right. Count one and two. Again, another fastball that's beating some of these twin hitters. 93 on the gun. Looks like it's got a little bit of life through the zone.
for your lawn. Visit your local Lowe's for savings and a free MLB fan guide. Compliments of Scott's. Well, we go to the bottom of the fifth inning. The Yankees are leading four to two. Twins with five hits. The Yankees with four. It'll be Teixeira, Rodriguez, and Cano here in the bottom of the fifth inning. Teixeira was hit by a pitch in the first, struck out in the third. And Liriano deals high. The Yankees have used the long ball, ball early this season to score a lot of their runs. Oh! Today's ball game, that is not the story. Manufactured a lot of runs. Nice job of situational hitting by the Yankees this afternoon. Now yesterday's game, last night was rained out, and um, Joe Girardi was asked today, was there given any thought given to playing a doubleheader today? And he said there was some thought. He said, but we talked it over with the Twins as to share our grounds to Casilla, and the Twins have their home opener tomorrow afternoon, and the Yankees play tomorrow afternoon in Boston, the Red Sox home opener, so we decided not to go that route. Now the game, which is not yet scheduled, will probably be scheduled sometime in September when the two teams have uh, mutual off days, but there's uh, no definitive date set at this point. But the Twins will have to fly back to New York to play that game. Here's Alex Rodriguez. He struck out, and his walk in the fourth, fourth inning started the Yankees' three-run inning, which is low. Hoping to get a win here and then head up to Boston. Look forward to their home opener tomorrow. And help but think about the Red Sox, Michael, getting on that plane in Cleveland, heading home 0 6. A long flight. The worst start the Red Sox have had since 1945. So it begs the question. Can they recover? I mean, it's only six games. Obviously, you can recover. Well, the stat I had seen, John, um, losing the first four games of the season, the first four, so they're 0 6 now. No one had ever won a World Series going 0 4, and only one team had ever gone to a World Series starting 0 4, and that was the 1985 Cardinals, and they lost that series. Uh, that's a long road to climb. But the best the Yankees will come into it. I mean, if you look at it this way, John, the Yankees would be four and two if they win today. So they have a two-game lead. So if somebody said, well, they have a two-game lead in September, would you say it's insurmountable? You almost have to take 0-6 out of the equation. When the Yankees won 114 games in 1988, I believe they started off one and four. There's a ground ball to short. Garcia, two outs. No, we, we joked about it, but I mean, there's an element of truth to it as well. Boston and the media in Boston, very reactionary. And uh, after Carl Crawford went hit us in the first game, there was a snarky headline about, well, this is a bad deal, something like that. So uh, I can't wait to pick up the Boston papers tomorrow, the Globe and the Herald. Great sports section, see what they say. And, you know, the fans will certainly be unnerved as well. Well, and all the anticipation of the upcoming season when you bring in Gonzalez and Carl Crawford and excited about a potentially good ball club. Now you wonder if the Yankees were hoping the Red Sox would win today. Because at 0 6, if you believe in do, they're going to win at some point. The, the likelihood of them going 0 9 is not very good. So would you rather they have won today and come back 1 and 5? It's all about the pitching matchups, and you know I only worry about the game that's in front of us now, Michael. So I'll start preparing right after. I know we have Phil Hughes against John Lackey. Then you have Yvonne Nova against Clay Buckholz and CC Sabathia against Josh Beckett.
Hot shot. Oh, nice, nice play by Valencia. But the throw not too good. Knocked down by Morno, but Cano picks up a single. Nice play by Valencia going to his right. And I guess this is where you have a greater appreciation for Alex Rodriguez. How he can make some of these plays and come up with a strong, accurate throw. Valencia kind of does the three quarter sidearm, and it's off the mark. All Morneau can do is knock it down. We've seen Alex Rodriguez make that play and be able to throw a four seamer across the diamond accurate, accurately. How about this, John? E5. Ooh, it's a tough error. That is a very tough error. David Freeman, the official score. That one is driven deep to right center. Span back. And he'll put it away for the final out of the fifth. No runs, no hits, one error, one man left. We go to the sixth. Four two games. by Verizon Fios switch to Fios a network ahead to learn more visit verizon.com slash get Fios Phil Hughes goes for the Yankees 11.25 ERA John Lackey 22.09 ERA our coverage begins at 1 right here on yes game time right around 2 o'clock and that's all the probables for the series now Saturday and Sunday Saturday's on Fox and Sunday is on ESPN but right after the game Yankee extra innings right here on yes. Jack Curry provided me with this information John which I'm sure you'll be interested in. The 1974 Pirates and the 1995 Reds are the only team since 1903 to start 0 and 6 and make the postseason. So the Red Sox playing against some history Here's Jim Tomey. Popped up. Long run for Andrew Jones. Slides and makes the play. Me and Jeter have a laugh about it. Andrew Jones playing deep, respecting the power of Jim Tome. Covers a lot of ground. The nice sliding catch, a basket catch, flips it to Derek Jeter. You can see calling all the way, good communication, nice play. Hold. There's a strike to Kadaya. Old Glover in center field with the Braves, 10 straight. And 
Lazo said he did not know. Interesting look for Tony Randazzo on the first base up. He's got gloves on. But he's prepared in case he loses those gloves. Because he has an extra pair in his back pocket. You never know if you're going to drop a glove. So he wants to make sure he's covered in case he does. He's also waving goodbye. Driven into right center field, but Swisher right there. Two away. AJ getting a couple of quick outs here in the sixth inning. You see the pitch count at 95. You mentioned Michael Judge, who already would love to get seven out of him. We'll see how it goes here with one more out in the sixth. All in all, Larry Rothschild, the pitching coach. You see the ratio of balls to strike, pretty good. Joe Girardi have to be very happy with what they have seen from AJ's. Except Larry's going to the binder. Oh, right. David Robertson beginning the stretch. We told you before the start of the game that AJ Burnett was two years with the Yankees. Has made 11 starts in April. He's never lost. He's six and zero with a 3.99. And if you remember last year, which turned out to be a real disappointing year, AJ started off like he was going to have the best year of his career, but it it fell apart and the wheels came off after the first couple of weeks. You know, think back to the second half of last year for AJ, and obviously it didn't go his way, but he would miss with his fastball location. Maybe four or five pitches an inning. I think I could think of four or five fastballs today that he has missed. You see, the month of August was not kind. June, 0 and 5 with an 11. Oh, check swing. Did he go around? Yes, he did. Russell Martin's looking for the ball. He gets it. They'll tag out Kubel, and that will do it. So, one, two, three inning for A.J. Burnett. As he has looked good so far today, we go to the bottom of the sixth inning. Yankees are up by two, four to two. The Rangers and the first 18,000 guests, 14 and younger, will receive a Six Flags Great Adventure Kids certificate. Good for one free junior ticket to Six Flags Great Adventure for children under 54 inches. For tickets, log on to Yankees.com, visit the Yankee Stadium ticket window. Yankees Clubhouse shops are called Ticketmaster at 877-469-9849.
But Ron Gardenhire makes a call to the bullpen, brought to you by AT&T. We're going to get a look at Jeff Manchin. One game so far. One inning, he allowed two runs. 18 ERA. So the Yankees are glad to see Liriano go. And they send up uh, Curtis Granderson to pinch hit for Andrew Jones against the right-hander. Pitch outside. Right now he's on the losing end of this game, but, but Liriano pitched well. That wasn't an easy four runs the Yankees scored. They battled for it. Now they face Manchin. You know, one ball that was hit hard in the fourth inning where they scored three runs, and the one ball that was hit hard, Andrew Jones, and he's going to get the rest of the afternoon off. Curtis Granderson pinch hitting. High fly ball, left field. Kubel's there for the first half. You know what, Michael Jack Curry is the guy that never stops working. I mean, he's sending you messages about stats, sending me messages about AJ's changeup and how many he's thrown in the ball game. Really? Uh, he's just relentless. It's incredible. He said AJ had thrown nine or ten when I got his text. Is Jabba Chamberlain getting loose now? Well, when I go to the studio, I watch the game and hang out, take it easy, get ready for the post game. Jack doesn't play that way. No, Jack plays all nine innings. Over to Clint Perkins warming up. And Martin down on strikes. on four hits and the twins two runs on five hits and they've committed one error although that's a questionable error I'm wondering if the Yankees will argue that point Robinson Cano ground ball of Valencia I guess they look at it John as a two prong play once you make the great play getting to the ball and you have plenty of time to get the runner the throw was what was bad Who tried to uh, work on his bunting all spring? Fouls it away. Thinking back to that Robinson Cano, I guess you called it a ground ball. It was a hot shot to the right of Valencia and made a great play to get to it. A little wide with the throw. Time to see a ball hit that hard, though. A hitter's always going to be begging for the hit. Slapped in the left field, coming on Kubel, and it might play for the final out of a one, two, three inning. So Manship comes on and does a good job. We played six here at the stadium. Yankees lead the Twins four to two.
And all of that adds up to Yankees four and the Twins two here at Yankee Stadium a Thursday afternoon. Enjoying the game, going over some things. Okay, they're taking AJ out. So who do you bring in now? The answer is Jabba Chamberlain on the Cadillac scoreboard. It's four, I'll say that again. Cadillac scoreboard four to two, four four and zero for the Yankees, two five and one for the Twins. And here's Jabba. Java pitched Monday, the first game against the Twins. Looked very impressive in that inning. Record at 1 0. This will be his fourth game. Java going a little old school on a chilly day, Michael. No sleeves. Now, I don't remember back to when you played. I, I didn't pay attention, but I would assume that you did that all the time. Never. Really? No, no, no. You no, would no. bundle up. Yes, I would. Wow. Well, strong. when you sit on the bench and root for your teammates, you got to stay warm. Here's Danny Valencia. After this game, the Yankees head to Boston. Line drive, caught by Jeter. Valencia's had back to back at bats where he's hit the ball hard. They're saying he got a little knuckleball that line drive off the bat of Valencia. On Yes Mo, you'll see the leap. You get a little look at the seams of the baseball on Yes Mo, a little knuckleball effect. Derek able to make the play. Now, Sean McAdam has covered the Red Sox forever, and this is uh, from a tweet that he sent out. Kevin Euclid after the game said we are frustrated as heck right now. We never thought we'd be here, but we are here, so we've got to deal with it. And that's what the Yankees will be going into tomorrow. Red Sox say a wounded American League East team. Garcia shows butt and he gets clipped with the ball on the way by. He'll take first. Now it's a good job by Vanover because he checked with Brian Gorman to see if in fact Casilla offered on the bunk because it doesn't matter if you get hit if you offered it's a strike. Now you decide. Now pulled it back. Casilla of course is a threat to run. Usually your number one and nine hitters are. Here's Denard Span. He's certainly a threat to run. Denard so far this uh, early season is seven for 22. I mentioned this Monday night when we watched Java pitch. I mean, he's proud of his fastball, really attacking hitters, and love his body language out on the mound. Looks like he's in total control of what he's doing mechanically. Delivery looks right on time. Michael, did you find it interesting after that game Monday? Joe Girardi actually came out and said Job is our seventh inning guy. Yeah, he, he's uh, he's shown a lot of faith in him, and they they liked what they saw in spring training. And I mean, we could just see the way they warm up. Sixth inning, Robertson was warming up. AJ got out of the sixth inning, all of a sudden Job popped up. So uh, he's not trying to hold his cards on that. Job chain with the seventh inning guy. And, Soriano eight, Mariano nine. Kind of more the Joe Torre recipe. But I think a lot of this changes, John, when the Pedro Feliciano comes comes back. Because if there are a couple of lefties that come up in the seventh inning, you're gonna see Feliciano and maybe you know, Robertson comes on to get a, a right-hander at the beginning of the inning, and then Feliciano two after that. 
So I think he's going to mix and match once he has that specialty lefty. I don't know if he looks at Boone Logan it's at this specialty. point as a specialty lefty. Would you agree? I totally agree, yeah. I think Boone Logan is more of a inning guy. But I guess my point was Joe Torrey always seemed to like to have what was a, the years I was playing. Flash Gordon pitching mm -hmm. the eighth inning, setting up for Mariano. Paul Quantrell in the seventh. It was pretty standard every day. Runner goes. Oh. Check swing, throw to second. And it hits off Cassia and goes into center field. He'll scramble to third. So that's going to be a stolen base in an E2. Casilla picks the right pitch to run on a slider down. Martin does a nice job backhanding it, but a low throw. Derek Jeter tries to short hop, make the tech, make the scoop and the tag in the same motion. Can't do it. Off of Casilla, and he advances to third. Two two. Yeah, he's going to give up this run with one out. They play the infield back, and now we'll just tighten it as we go to the last innings of the game. And Job is thinking the other way. He's thinking about a big strikeout here of Span if he can pick it up. Count two and two. And a good fastball in on his hands for a foul ball. Slider by Russell Martin. Excellent technique. Looking for the ball down and in. That's where the mistake's going to be with the slider from Java. Good anticipation, good execution. Keeps it right in front. There's a good feeling for a backstop saving a run on a pitch in the dirt. One percent of the time, we were successful last year, driving in a runner from third with less than two outs. Three-two. Found that. Is the old emergency hack right there from Denard Span? Was beaten with a fastball and seen a couple of sliders back to back. It's a nice job just making some contact. Himself another chance to see another pitch. First, that's going to score a run. And Java beats Spain to first, and the Yankee lead is now four to three. Let's check this out. Time for the GE Capital Partner Play. Great partnerships are built on trust at GE Capital. We prove that every day. Well, nice job by Span putting it in play, and he saw Java hesitate a little bit. A nice partner play with Mark Teixeira. An easy ground ball takes his time. Make sure you give a good feed to Java. Makes the play. Java kicked it into another gear there, Michael. A little hesitation. Made up some ground to beat Span to first. And that's important. Span gets to first base. He's got the ability to steal second. That's the tying run. So he did kick it in. Pop 
popped up. A Rod gives it a look, and it's out of play. The season four and two on their six game homestand. The Twins open up with six on the road. They would be two and four. One, two. Fuck. Obviously, the dangerous part of the lineup for the Twins Maurer, Morneau, and Jim Tomei. Waiting in the wings. Check swing. Maurer is on deck if Nishioka gets on. You really want to go get Nishioka right here, three and two. Driven out to left field. Gardner will put it away for the final out of the set. But the Twins get a run on no hits, one error, and nobody left on base. At the end of six and a half, it's time for the seventh inning stretch. Yankees lead Minnesota four to three, but we're going to stay right here to honor America in the Bronx. Moment of silent prayer. As we remember the. Able to hit at all 
uh, and that's been their problem so far. So they're in danger as well of continuing their losing ways. Three nothing, as Bob said, in the fifth on the Cadillac scoreboard right here at the stadium. Yankees four, and the Twins three. So this has been a tight series, tight game on Monday, tight game on Tuesday. Yesterday was rained out, and uh, another one that's uh, going to come right down to the last out again here at the stadium. Mariano beginning his stretching, but. Uh, the eighth inning belongs to Rafael Soriano. He's warming up as we speak. There's Soriano. So the Yankees would like to add some runs to give some breathing room to their their bullpen, and it'll be the top of the order. It'll be Jeter, Swisher, and Teixeira. Derek with a first inning double, and then grounded to short and walked. Oh! And Manship deals a strike. You're right. The Yankees would love to give Soriano a couple of extra runs here in the seventh inning. He's going to have to go right through the middle of the Twins lineup. Joe Maurer, Justin Morneau, and Jim Tomei in a one-run game. And we said this on Monday, John. Sometimes the eighth inning guy should be getting the save because that, that's the hard part of the order coming up in the eighth inning. Soriano looking for a little bounce back inning after having a rough Tuesday night. Three walks in that inning. Sinkers from Manship in on the hands of Derek Jeter started him out with some breaking balls off the plate. Running a little two seamer in on his hands. Nice little battle going. The 2 2. Two two. Nick Swisher's waiting. Lights have been on here at the stadium all day, right from the very first pitch. The sun has tried to peek through the clouds, but has not succeeded to this point. Grounded slowly toward third, Valencia. Reaches twice, and that gives Jeter the hit. Valencia knew it was going to be tight, but once he reached twice, John, he lost that play. Well, it'll be the second hit of the afternoon for Derek Jeter. The first one was a hard hit double. This and a little infield hit. Valencia cannot come up with the grip. Double clutches. Gives Derek Jeter plenty of time to get down the line. It's a little swinging bunt. A little harder than that, but can't have him, can't get the handle. Derek has five hits so far this year. Three of them of the infield of variety. 
Twins are going to make a pitching change. We'll come back. Just a moment. and Computer World at my Toyota, the official hybrid of the New York Yankees. New pitcher for the Minnesota Twins, Jose Mijares. Now the Twins really read him the riot act last year. They said, you've got to come into camp in better shape. Now he got into better shape toward the end of the year and he came in about what he was last year. But when he started last season, he was heavier than this, so they feel he could pitch it this way and be effective. Comes in and moves Nick Swisher over to the right side. The book on Mihadas is Loves Life, has an, a real great attitude, loves to eat, and that's why he puts on weight. There's nothing wrong with that. I live by those same uh, same code of ethics. Nick also loves life. Always smiling. Big off season for weddings. Indeed. And there's a little bit of miscommunication now. They want to get this right. Three throw versus the first base in a row. Now Joe Mauer and Mars can't get on the same page. Reminding you that the Yankees will play the Red Sox tomorrow at Fenway. And uh, Gordon Eads, who writes for Boston, uh, ESPNBoston.com, quoting Dustin Pedroia, the former MVP in the Red Sox second baseman, we're going to go home, and my wife's going to look at me and say, you're 0 and 6. You guys stink. <laughs> Bring the back ground ball to second, on to first. And Morneau cannot come up with it. So just a force out on the 6-4. 
Nishioka had played shortstop in Japan, moving over to second base. Derek Jeter going in hard, but this has got to be a double play that has to be turned and at the major league level. Morneau cannot come up with a pick. A good feed from Casilla, just a low throw across the diamond. So Dustin Pedroia is not sugarcoating it at all, huh? No, he added that we care, and he also said about going home. He said we need those fans more than ever. Now you've played in Boston, John. And I'm wondering, do they lift them up tomorrow during the pregame introductions, the pop and circumstance oh. opening day, or do they boo them off the field? No, I think at the beginning they're going to try to lift them up, and obviously if it doesn't go well early in that game, I think that the tone is going to change. But you know what? To be honest, Michael, I played there in '92 and '93 when. The Red Sox were terrible. Right. So I think it was a little different feel around Fenway Park. To share a thousand away. The one one. But Joe Maurer might have gotten crossed up. Unusual, not a runner at second base. So no miscommunication with signals or signs. Well, you can see Nick Swisher going to the shortstop side. Nishioka has shown the Yankees in this series when he turns a double play, he always continues towards the third base side of second. Nick Swisher knew that, went in hard. A good clean takeout. Now, for those of you that don't know the rule, Nick Swisher is well within his rights as long as he can reach second base. And you see, he can clearly reach second base. That's a clean slide. And this Yoka just didn't get out of the way. And John's right. He has telegraphed that move the entire series. Yeah, a lot of second basements will change it up. They'll come across the bag towards third base one time, and then the next time they'll straddle the bag and move in the other direction. Nishioka has shown the Yankees he will continually go to the third base side. Nick Swisher knew that, and it was an easy takeout. One thing that Cano always does, John, he uses the bag almost as a block. A little protection, yeah. sure. Again, we talked about it. he's used to playing shortstop in Japan, making the transition to second base. He's had some trouble with the transfers and had a little trouble there with Nick Swisher. Now, the reason why it's so difficult, and John could speak to this better, moving from shortstop to second, when you take the feet at second on a double play as a shortstop, the play's in front of you. Yep. At second base, your back is to the runner, and you're almost blinded. And now Nishioka is, is limping off, actually being helped off. And it looks like it's that left leg. Nick Swisher concerned about Nishioka, not trying to hurt him at all, trying to break up the double play, which is what he did, but he's not going in there with any ill intent. No, he's not trying to hurt anybody. It's a good, clean baseball play. You can see, I don't think the Twins have any, have any problem with it. Let's hope he's all right. So they're going to bring in Tolbert to play second base. And here's Alex Rodriguez. He is 0 for 2 with a walk and a run scored. Mahara steals low. Oh, 
Here's a quick quiz, John. Of his 615 home runs, how many do you think A-Rod has hit with runners on base? Three eighty. Whoa, two hundred and ninety-six. So three hundred and nineteen of them have been solo shots. Plethora of information. the play for the final out. No runs, no hits, no errors, and one man left. It's time for Rafael Soriano here in the eighth inning. One game in this series, outstanding. The second game, not so good. This is the rubber match for him. season right now, so we're asking you to vote along with us for the Chevy player of the game. Text your vote to 58772 or vote online at yesnetwork.com. Today's candidates are number one, A.J. Burnett, number two, Andrew Jones, number three, Brett Gardner, number four, Jim Tomei. Vote now, make your voice heard. You know that standard text messaging rate certainly apply. So Rafael Soriano comes on and he tries to hold it right here at 4-3 in the eighth inning. You've already read about, you've heard about, it's been detailed, it's been explored, it's been dissected. Using him in the eighth inning when the Yankees were up 4 0, he didn't have great command. Uh, walked three batters, left the bases loaded, and then uh, David Robertson gave up a blooper to right field. That ended up clearing the bases. So here's Joe Maurer now against Rafael Soriano. And you got to give the Yankees credit, John, because Soriano that day left the ballpark without talking to the media. And Yankee GM Brian Cashman and the president of the team, Randy Levine, the next day called up Scott Boris, the agent for Rafael Soriano, and said, you know what? That's that's part of his responsibility. That's not what we do here. You've got to stay. And Scott called up Soriano, and then to his credit, he met with the media and he apologized. He said, I was so angry that I had given up the win for CC and I just didn't I didn't want to say the wrong thing, but I'll never do it again. I thought every every end of that problem handled it very very well grounded up the middle and threw for base hit Soriano just missed grabbing that one we talked about it It'd be a tough inning for Soriano the middle of the lineup for the Minnesota Twins and Joe Maurer picks up a base hit on a little slider down and away just out of the reach of Soriano Robinson Cano going to his right does not have a play you know, Michael, getting back to the Soriano issue with not dealing with the media, and also from a teammate standpoint, it's awfully disappointing when you have a teammate who won't face the music and 
you know that responsibility then gets deflected to other guys in the clubhouse which isn't fair so it's nice to see the whole thing was handled properly. And usually when a pitcher departs without talking it falls to the catcher. And that's what happened with Russell Martin. He's the one who had to answer all the questions. And, and that's the frustrating part because obviously you're being asked a question about somebody else and you can't get inside their head. What went wrong? What was he thinking? The 0 1. Foul back. Fuck. Soriano's throwing hard 94 miles an hour. He topped that at 93, and that was the final batter on Tuesday. So he's got a little extra adrenaline today. Yeah, he, he looks like he looked the first couple of appearances too, where he's kind of dotting the outside corner, just missing off the plate or nipping the corner. High fly ball, right field. Swisher for the first out. Michael I guess it's fair to say Joe Girardi trying to find out about the personality of his new reliever as well. I mean a four nothing game. You don't know what Soriano was thinking but he didn't look like himself and you wonder being in a closer in Tampa last year he had a reputation when he pitched in games just to get some work. It didn't go very well. And he was very honest when he spoke to the media the next day he said it is a problem with me and I've got to be able to deal with it. I've got I don't know why but I don't pitch the same. Unless it's a safe situation. So does Girardi change his uh, his feeling on this as Tome pops up for the second out as Gina puts it away. Does he say okay I'm going to bring him in in three nothing games but not four nothing because I don't think he'd bring him in at five nothing. Right. So four nothing is kind of that flip game. What do you do. Yeah. And you know what he brings a closer mentality too because you watch this fastball. It's pretty much right down the middle to Jim Tomei. You mentioned the 589 career home runs. A closer mentality is not afraid of the challenge, throws it right down the middle, and he wins the battle. There's Michael Kadire. Oh. Strike on the outside corner. This is. Quote unquote a safe situation. 4 3 Yankees lead trying to hold on. The rubber game of this three game set. Ooh. Now, yesterday's rain out helped the Yankees in this sense. They didn't have their big guns out of the bullpen yesterday after having worked successive days. So Mariano wasn't available and Soriano wasn't available. Now both are available today with the day off. One more. Fly ball, center field. Granderson drifts over, and Soriano puts himself well. Comes back, and in 10 pitches, retires the Twins without allowing a run. We go to the bottom of the eighth. Yankees lead the Twins 4 to 3.
WB Mason postgame as Bob Lorenz and Jack Curry bring you highlights and analysis from this afternoon's game, plus a preview of this highly anticipated weekend series in Boston. And Kimberly Jones will get the team's reaction from the clubhouse. It's all coming up later on the postgame only on this. Nice job by Soriano. And now Dusty Hughes will come on to pitch the bottom of the eighth inning. Those are the numbers on Hughes. This will be his third game. The attendance here at the stadium today, 41,512 as Mariano begins to warm. Cano against Hughes. And a strike. Cano, Posada, and Granderson. Lefty, switch hitter, lefty. Ground ball a second. Tolbert. One away. Now, I know John doesn't like to look ahead, but you might. In the ninth inning, Mariano will face Kubo, who really hits it yeah. well. Danny Valencia and Alexi Casilla. And on the bench, for the Twins, they have a, a righty hitter, Jason Repko, another righty hitter, Delman Young. And uh, the, the second catcher, Drew Butera. Matt Tolbert's already been used. So those are the three guys that Ron Gardner has that he can go to. Pitch outside to Posada. And one name that jumps out at you, Kubel, who has really hit well off of Mariano. Five for eight with a home run. Pay attention to that matchup leading off the inning. Good. Count two and one. Posada today is 0 for 3. Two strikeouts and a fly ball center. Posada with four hits this year. Three home runs. He's four for 21. And the count, three and two. For Posada, has he struck out three times today? Let's take a look at the Land Rover drive of the game. Andrew Jones in the bottom of the fourth inning. It's a little slider, middle of the plate, pulls it into the corner. That is your Land Rover drive of the game. Andrew now a spectator as Curtis Granderson pinch hit for him. In the sixth oh. inning, Curtis uh, flies out to left in the sixth and takes a strike from Dusty Hughes. I like the name Dusty. It just it, it evokes toughness. And I don't think that you could be a soft person if your name's Dusty. Sounds like a cowboy. 
Dusty Hughes. Like Dusty Rhodes Point. from New York Giants lore. Kid, Dusty K. What do, you, what do you think? Dusty K. It just doesn't flow. No? No. I don't think of it. The 2 2. Oh. Check swing. Oh. He did not go. Hughes has that big sweeping slider. A nice take by Curtis Granderson. Strike three, Granderson down looking. So a good job by Dusty Hughes as he retires the Yankees in order. Top of the ninth coming up. Granderson looks at a called third strike, and Mariano looks to close out this game. That'll be his fifth game. Last worked in Tuesday's game, top of the ninth. Clean inning. Well, he's looking to save the Yankees' fourth game, so he would have saved every single game they've won so far this year, and their record would go to the number on his back. They'd be four and two as they head to Boston. He always seems to face Jason Kubel. Kubel five for eight against Mariano. And usually in a situation like this with one run ball game, you'll hear me say, make him hit the ball the other way to the big part of the ballpark. That goes out the window with Mariano because of that cutter in on the hands of the lefties. Kubel has a grand slam against Rivera. And he says he doesn't hit him that hard. But he has pretty good luck. The ball certainly find the grass in the outfield. That one is driven to center field. This time Mariano got him one away.
Nice job running that cutter in on the hands of Kubel. Here's Valencia. Valencia is 0 for 3. 2 for 19 so far this season. Fouled away. Valencia's hit the ball hard two times in this ball game. Nothing to show for it. Now Mariano's breakout year was 1996 and pitched over 100 innings out of the bullpen. Pitched the uh, seventh and the eighth inning a lot. He really did the role of two relievers now. And he said when he was that age, he tried to strike everybody out. And then he told me a story today I'd never heard. He said that Mel Stoudemire, the Yankees' former pitching coach, sent him to Instruction League after 1997 when he was a closer for the first year. He set up for Wetland in 96, and he taught him to be more economical. He did not want him to strike people out. He said having a seven pitch inning is a good thing. You can pitch more innings during the season instead of going 20, 25, and trying to strike people out. He said that's where I learned to be. Let him hit it, be economical in instructional league. He said, I was already an established major leaguer and I went down there because Mel wanted me to learn that. Did he have this cut fastball at that age in 97? High fly ball, deep left. Going back, Gardner still back, and he makes the play on the track. I think he was still throwing fastballs there. Yeah. Well, Valencia just put a scare into Mariana Rivera. The fourth inning, Valencia hit a ball kind of like this, hit it hard to left field, and it didn't go anywhere. And it sounded like he hit this one better off of Mariano, a little cutter out over the plate. He knew he made good contact. I think he was hoping for a little help from maybe a breeze, and not much of a breeze today. Delman Young is going to pinch in for Alexi Casilla as the Twins are down to their final. Ground ball is short. Cheater fires in the dirt. Scoop by Teixeira. Yankees win the game four to three. So Mariano comes on and works a one, two, three, ninth inning. Now as the Yankees start the season with a four and two homestand. AJ Burnett will get the win. Mariano gets the save. And Burnett has won his first two starts of the season for the third time in his career. He did it in 99 as a rookie, and he did it in 2009 in his first year with the Yankees. So a big smile for Mariano. We want you to stick around for the postgame show to find out who's today's Chevy player of the game. I thought that A.J. did a good job today, John, and I thought that uh, it was a nice bounce back from Soriano after a rough outing. Yeah, nice bounce back from Soriano. Mariano did his thing, and you feel good about the Yankees taking two out of three against the Twins. Now you get on that plane and look forward to another series against the Boston Red Sox. That never gets dull. And we'll have that tomorrow. We'll be on the air at 1, and the game will start at 2. It's opening day at home for the Red Sox, and they limp home at 0-6. The Yankees will come into Fenway with a four and two record. So not too bad for the Yankees. Nice way to start the season. They won their first two series. Two out of three against the Tigers. Two out of three against the Minnesota Twins. Let's get it down to the field and Kimberly Jones. Kim? Thanks, Michael. Andrew Jones, you were double. What'd you see on that pitch from Liriano? Oh, it was a slide over the plate. Um, you know, he was throwing a lot of off pitch today and, you know, he didn't feel comfortable with his fastball. So, you know, I would just really like to look something soft and, um, you know, first of all, I drove the ball pretty good with a changeup, and, you know, I got lucky with that slider. We saw you contribute the other night with your home run and your first at bat as a Yankee. What's it like to be part of this lineup? Well, it's great. This is a great lineup. I mean, it's, it, the way the lineup is, it's tough to get in this lineup. But, um, you know, I, I get a chance to play against left hand, and I'm trying to do the best I can. Everyone wants to play every day. Do you have to remind yourself a couple days a week would be all right? Oh, you know, I think any any time when they call my name, I'm trying to go out there and do my best. I just got to keep working with Kalon down there in the cage and, and trying to maintain the swing. Everyone loves Kevin Long. Let's talk defense. You had a nice sliding catch in the sixth off that Jim Tomey ball. How'd you get there? I don't know. I just just ran. I thought I thought the infield. It was an infield ball. I don't know where Aro was or Jitter, but um, I was giving him a lot of crap about that. But um, you know. This, we got a great team. We just had to keep, you know, keep having each other back, and I think we'll be fine. You were asking Jeter where he was. You know what I was wondering? Where were the onion rings from the other night? <laughs> I don't know. I wish they could have thrown a couple ones out there. <laughs> Andrew, thanks so much. Thank you. Michael. Those are the onion rings.
That happened the other night, and today a big hit for Andrew Jones. So we thank Kim Jones, and we thank Andrew as well. We're going to take a quick break. We'll wrap things up, and then the postgame show after that. Yankees beat the Twins 4-3 to at Thursday afternoon in the Bronx as they move to Boston.